Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you, and today we're going to be taking a look, probably more than your average look, at the Case Labs M8. Um, right, now, straight from the get go, if um, uh, I seem a little bit dark, or like the case seems to be blending into the background, anything like that, it's kind of a mixture of my camera having trouble distinguishing between the colours and doing its best of what it can. I have had a little bit of a play and stuff, but it's just not having any of it. And the fact that the colour temperature of my bulbs is actually quite high. Um, I went a little bit too high. I actually need to drop them down a bit so I get more yellow in. So stuff like this doesn't, you know what I mean, get um, yeah, get lost. But Case Labs, they're uh, a relatively new company, and I say that because they've not been around like very long. There are still enthusiasts out there that know about them. Uh, they are trying um, really hard to kind of get their kit out there and stuff like that. There's not really been a lot of reviews. Um, based in California, they are uh, obviously an American company. Um, now, I found these uh, through the wonders of Facebook. And what I'm going to do is put the link underneath. And really, the M8, believe it or not, considering the size of this, is their uh, smallest case at the moment. Um, now I'm always looking for kind of new companies and new products that are coming out uh, but this, the second I kind of landed on this page or, or on their page, I was just gobsmacked with the amount of stuff that they've uh, got and the amount of options because so many times now you can get a case and it doesn't quite fit what someone might want um, and you're always kind of left there going well if they'd have had this on offer, if they'd have had that on offer, if they'd done this, if you had that available, and it could have made a brilliant case. Well, pretty much, Case Labs have got an amazing amount of accessories for this case. Pretty much you can tailor it to exactly what you want, and they've almost got everything you could possibly need to make it right for you. And I'm going to just nip behind, I mean, I've got so much here, it's unreal. Um, obviously, we've got the main case. This is a uh, separate pedestal, um, and I'll, I'll go into more details, but I'm just going to go beyond the camera quickly and show you the other stuff that I've got here. And that there is uh, two more doors, that's an extra roof panel. Um, I've got another bit for radiators, I've got literally all of the, the things that you can have to bolt into the cases. Like I said, I'm going to have to go through this, and to be perfectly honest with you, let me put this camera back to where it should be. Uh, right, let me turn it around so I can actually see myself. Quality TTL video as ever. If I'm perfectly honest with the amount of stuff, if I went through everything, we would be here for days. There is an amazing amount of kit, and also what I would generally do is have a full rig built up in this. But there's so many little options and stuff. I'm actually not going to put hardware in it straight away. I'm going to show you the pedestal later on with some radiator stuff in it, just for to be able to show you pumps and stuff, uh, sorry, sizes and stuff like that. And also we're going to be dropping, uh, showing you the radiators and the radiator options in this case. But to, like I said, to be perfectly honest with you, if I was to build a rig in here, I wouldn't be able to show you where everything could go uh, and all the many, many different options, because just for argument's sake, because of the roof panel, we can have uh, radiators in the top, or we can put radiators above and have a separate roof panel. So if I'd have built a water cooled loop in there, I still would have been taking bits off to be able to show you around. It's honestly, this is an immensely difficult review for me to try and pull off because I want to try and do it justice. Um, so yeah, it, 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 there is so much, so much stuff to get through. So, what I'm going to do in, is, uh, as very best I can, is bring you in and we're going to start on the main unit. Um, but like I said, there is so much, I'm probably going to end up coming back and going, oh, I've forgotten to show that, I've forgotten to show that. But, I will try my best. But like I said, we're going to make a start on this unit and I'm going to try and leave the camera on the tripod as much as possible, just so that I can still show you all the other bits. But... Oh, good lord, guys. I, Yeah, let's leave the, the rest of it for the conclusion. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get on with the main body of the review now. Right then, guys and girlies. 
I'm going to try my very best to cover everything. Uh, there is so much that I've got to do, uh, I'm bound to forget stuff. But we'll start at the very front and then we'll work our way around. Now, everything, I can't stress enough, everything is modular. So, for argument's sake, this uh, top blank panel here, it's just plain. If you wanted, there are um, panels available that you can whip them out and you can have the same mesh that's the same as this. But, but then again, also, if you wanted, you could have plain blank panels in the front um, or more individual panels. Honestly, there is just endless amounts of options. Now this side of the case is primarily what you would call, this is like your optical drive bay side. So they're all five and a um, quarter inch drives. Excuse me. Uh, these, these ones here that are at the moment uh, have the availability of uh, fitting a 120mm fan in, should you wish. Uh, now, these sections are all one, two, three optical bay sides. So we can tell by looking at the front, there's a, the availability of not, uh, 10 in total, sorry. Nine here, and then the extra one at the top. This side isn't an optical bay uh, size, and this is for other accessories. Um, but as with much of this case, everything is removable. So you can pull the front off just like that. And what I'm going to show you, I'll bring it up to the camera so that you can see. If I show you that side, everything's got these little like pop sections in, and you can literally just whip them out and put, push them back on. And basically when you do to remove them, that's how, you, if you were to change this top panel, you just undo these two screws, you can take that out, and then if you wanted to, you could just fit the extra mesh panel, which, just to show you, I will do quickly, now because I've taken the door off, I can't get the finger on. Right, I'm just going to change this quickly with you on camera, just to show you. I need to get my screwdriver out. The fact that this case is just so infinitely customizable is brilliant. And to be perfectly honest with you, it's so customizable. From a reviewer's standpoint, it's actually an immense task. We're just going to slide this other panel in. Give it a bit of a push, there we go. And then you can just buzz the screws back in again. Now, like I said, this whole side panel can be changed if you like, or this side. So there you go. We've changed that section just quickly. We chuck the front back on. Close the door. There you go. So that's how easy that is. But something else which our case labs have just brought out for this side of the case is this panel here. And it uh, takes up the uh, would take up these three sections if we were to fit it. If I bring it up to you and show you, you can see it's just the, the mesh that matches everything else. But you flip it on the other side and have a look. That's there for a 360 millimeter rad. You've got these extended um, uh, like screw holes here, so you would be able to fit some of the older, larger. Um, spacing rads, but pretty much everything nowadays is 15mm uh, gaps anyway, which this easily supports. So you could quite happily get yourself a 360mm radiator in the front of the case here. Uh, now because of the, uh, the sizes and stuff, even if you did fit your 360mm rad in this side, side, you'd still probably struggle to get the uh, optical bay in with most rads because of the end tanks on the radiators, it's not just about the fans. Uh, some you might get away with it on, uh, but yeah, I'm not really a fan of optical drives anyway, as we're all perfectly aware. Anyway, so that is just that side of the case. And uh, like I said, you can buy so many different things for these and mix them and match them as you wish. If you wanted to have just a fan grill, then a load of optical bays, then a load of accessories, and then a mesh grill at the top, you could do, you literally, it's just, you can do what you like with it. Now, moving slightly further over, we've actually got 
uh, anti-vandal switches from standard. Uh, now this is the uh, normal, I think it's 21mm button and then this is a 16mm uh, switch. Now this one is uh, probably my favourite of the vandal switches because it's the one with the ring around the outside. And it may sound daft but when you click these buttons they've got a real nice slidey positive click. And yeah, that's why I like them anyway, that and they look good. Um, so technically you would have, this is the power button. Uh, and obviously your power light, and then this button would be your reset switch and your hard drive activity light. And then we've also got uh, firewire, headphone and microphone, and then uh, four USBs. Uh, so that's it in the front of the case. If I whip the uh, front off again, just to show you the other side, you can see on this side uh, we have uh, more panels. These two are blanked off. Again, you can take these out should you wish. You can add fans into these should you wish, uh, on, but on this top section, we'll, I'll show, we'll get to it in a second anyway, but that's uh, where the hard drive dock is, but we'll get to that when we move around, because what I want to show you now quickly, and I'm going to move the camera up as best I can, like I said, I'm, this is a real pain in the bum, but that's just so I can tilt this forward and show you the roof. Uh, they've got uh, these um, mesh panels again in the roof and the roof is just like the rest of the case where you've got this removable panel. So you can just whiz the roof off like that. Now in the roof, natively in this case, you can see that there's some blank panels on here at the moment, uh, but you can fit two 360mm radiators straight into the roof. Now the roof panel is quite thin, so you wouldn't be able to put fans on the top, but if you have a look, there's a fair old thickness here. I'm going to get my ruler. Fair old thickness. Now the top of the motherboard tray is here, and there's 60, say 70mm of room there, so you could um, uh, get quite a thick radiator in there and you probably would get away with um, having uh, a set of fans on it but it would be very tight uh, so Case Labs infinitely aware of this and obviously with a case this size a lot of people will be going oh, I can't even run push pull with a case this size that would be pointless so Case Labs in their infinite wisdom have an optional roof Yes, that's right, you can buy a different roof. Now this roof is 70 millimetres, so you could easily get a uh, 60 mil rad up here. If I get it on the right way around, you can have a 60 mil rad on the top. and have your fans underneath, you wouldn't have any problems with the motherboard at all. If you're using slightly thinner rads, because not everyone's got 60mm rads, you could easily get thicker, um, you can get an extra set of fans on. But just to show you, because I've got a 60mm rad waiting, if I'm to put that there, I was hoping I'd be able to get it behind and I can. There you go, if you put the 60mm rad in, you can see that there's plenty of room there for the rad, but you won't get another set of fans on. If you want to run push-pull fans, you either have to buy thinner rads, but let's face it, when you're running these big 60mm rads, there really isn't any need to, to run push-pull. But, one thing I will stress, is that if you're running uh, a rad with push-pull, it would kind of say that you've not got enough cooling, because, or you maybe trying to run your fans lower. With a rad like this, with something like the Scythe GT Gentle Typhoon fans, a single set of um, fans is enough. But, let's face it, you can easily get two 360mm rads in the top of your case with that panel and not have to worry about um, uh, anything interfering with your motherboard. So, the, excuse me, two 360mm rads, that's a mental amount of cooling already. But, 
Now, this is something I want to, I'm going to move, we're going to talk about the radiators, but the door is hinged. You can see it's swinging open, but also the door is easily removable. And I'm just kind of covering that while I'm here, but you can easily slide it back on, click the door back in place. What I'm going to do now, just quickly, put that radiator back there so you can see. I'm going to pitch the camera down a little bit. Also, in the floor of the case, the floor also supports 360mm rats. So you could technically, if you wanted to, drop yourself another 360mm rat in the floor, and that, being 60mm thick, is just uh, enough room for um, you to be able to get your motherboard in. Once you've got fans on and stuff, because of the way it's spaced, um, unless you've got graphics cards right at the bottom of your motherboard, really not going to have a problem with this. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight PCI Express slots. So some of the mega extended motherboards aren't going to fit in this one. But, again, case labs pretty much make a case for, for everyone. Um, they do bigger cases, uh, wider cases, SL2 case, it, it's completely nuts. But as you can see there, if you wanted, you could have 360mm rad in the floor with a set of fans, 360mm rad in the roof with a set of fans. Let's say you don't like the idea of having your rad in the floor. Because of the um, uh, additional panel that we've got that we can click into the front, you could stick your 360mm rad in the front instead. Just so, you know what I mean, if you wanted to. So, that's two rads in the roof, uh, and a rad in the floor, or a rad in the front if you want. Now, I'm just going to spin the case around, I'm going to take the other door off, that easy. You can also put another radiator in the floor on this side, because of this um, uh, bracing panel, I can't slide it in at the moment, it's not going to let me get it in there, but you can put another one in the floor on this side. So, easily now, we've already said that we could fit two rads in the roof and a rad in the floor on each side. So that's four, 400, uh, sorry, four 360 millimeter radiators that we can fit all at the same time in this case and there not be any problems with hardware or anything. Obviously, if you want to use 60mm rads, you need to use the uh, extended roof panel. But, I mean, that is just completely nuts. The fact that it is so modular, if, you have a, if I tilt this this way, you can see that there's a, a fan panel here, and then a blank panel, where you can quite literally just remove this fan panel, Try and do this without dropping it. Say for argument's sake, you wanted it lower down. You didn't have a rad in. You wanted it lower down. You can just screw it in somewhere else, or you can have it further up. Just directing air at something. Now, there you go. So we just moved it down a bit, basically. So you can you can have this is just a, a fan plate. There's also blanking plates. You can remove this sidebar all together, should you wish. In fact, what I'll do is I'll whiz it out now, just to show you, and we'll put the radiator in the bottom. Because this is what I mean about, this case is so customizable that it's just completely nuts. Now, while I'm taking this out, this side, this brace, can also be fitted in the other side of the case. So say for argument's sake you've got an absolute mass bank of graphics cards, you could technically, if you've not water cooled them, fit this brace into the other side of the case and have that fan panel blowing directly onto the back of your graphics card to put some airflow pretty much direct at your, uh, like I said, at your graphics cards really. But there we go, we can move that out of the way. You can see that you can easily get that radiator in there. Get the radiator in the roof as well. Absolutely nuts how much you can do with this. Now, this um, hard drive cage here, 
This one uh, supports four three and a half inch hard drives. Uh, we've got all the grommets and everything. I've not put any hard drives in it, but we've got all the grommets to be able to fit them. They are um, uh, all rubber grommeted, so they're all properly damped. 120 millimeter uh, fan optional that you can fit should you wish to cool it. It's yeah, and again you can fit this up or down on this side, and you can also fit it onto the uh, other side should you wish, and have it in the optical bay side. So, you don't even have to have it on this side if you don't want, you can have it over there. Again, you can fit it wherever you want. Now, this plate here, on here, basically that's like a support bracket for a power supply. So you can fit the power supply in. The way that the door is made up, you can do it like this. There we go, the way the door is made up, it's got a... Uh, these mesh panels, so your, your power supply can pull cool air in from outside. Uh, now I've not got one, but I know there is one. A, uh, another bracket that Case Lab do, that fits across the side here, so you can have yet another radiator in. So for argument's sake, say you had your power supply at the bottom, you can have a 360mm radiator in the side, or you can have it here. You, like I said, the, the amount of uh, options with this is absolutely mind-blowing. Um, you've got your cables for uh, the power, uh, your switches at the front here. I've got to admit that the uh, braid could have been done further towards the edges. Where's my... Ah, I'll zoom you in. Dun, dun, dun. Right. So the braid could have been done more towards the edge, I think, personally. Um, yeah, that just hasn't got that kind of personal touch to it. I understand someone's done it. The braid's also quite thin as well. It actually looks like either it's been stretched too much or it's too big for these cables. Um, so I do think, from my point of view, they need to address this. This braid needs to be better for the cost of braid. By the time you've gone to the effort of actually sit, someone sitting there doing it, uh, they'd be much better off having them done better. Something else which I picked up before. Now, this is me being picky, but for the, uh, for the USB cables, the cables are all broken. Now, I'm alright, I could sit there and work out which way round the USB cables have got to go to fit them. But the thing is, with these single ones, if you fit them the wrong way round, and then you put a, uh, say for example, like USB pen drive in the front. If you fit it the wrong way around, it puts power in the wrong place and can instantly kill uh, your pen drive. I think Case Labs need to have the ones that are fixed. So basically, all of the um, cables are there ready, and you basically you've got that one missing that you know about, which is blanked off, so you know which way around the cables go and then they just fit in, so it's like two go into one, basically. I really do think, um, guys, you need to get these chains so you've not got these individual ones, or send very, very clear, w way laid out diagrams to show people how to fit these on their motherboards, because there's nothing here that tells me how to fit these. Now, I know you kind of expect an enthusiast to be able to work it out, Someone that's a little bit excited, uh, just spent you know a lot of money on this case, fits it, doesn't realise it's around the wrong way, pop, could end up breaking something very expensive. And I don't think changing the way the cables are is going to end up costing you a lot of money. So yeah, would definitely like to see these uh, together and so that you can't fit them the wrong way around. Um, obviously you've got your... Um, audio cables and your firewire cables should you want them. These aren't braided or anything but they're very kind of thick PVC heavy duty, sorry I'm off camera, very thick PVC heavy duty uh, cables um, and obviously that's a nice quality, you know they're not going to get ruined or anything. Much prefer the look of that really to even the braided, I probably prefer nice plain cables to this braided but those braided bits definitely need looking at. Now, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually, I am going to uh, admit defeat and pop you uh, off the camera. We'll, uh, oh, we'll zoom you out to start off with. I'm going to pop you off to have a good look round 
because we've got some uh, cable routing holes at the top of the motherboard tray massive CPU cut out on the motherboard tray I might add by the way this PSU bracket is removable um, but we've also got some more cable management holes here here and right at the front here and also at the bottom of the motherboard tray as well uh, now obviously what you've got to bear in mind is if you've got a radiator in the bottom on the other side you are going to need these cables the motherboard tray is removable and it's all on runners as well if you have a look and we've only got a pop the screws out and they don't fully come out of the tray either as you can see they don't come loose and then said motherboard tray just easy peasy slides out so if you wanted to work on your hardware and you've got a radiator in the bottom for example it could be a lot easier than normal to be able to do it now I'm not going to tighten all these bolts back up what I want to do is show you this grill because that's some really really thick material now I mean you can see how thick it is there but it's all laser cut lovely the powder coat's all gone on there really nice you've also got this hexagon mesh continued on down here for like your graphics card exhaust I actually I know this is going to sound really nerdy but the this kind of hexagon stroke honeycomb style mesh when the material is so thick I really like it. When it first turned up, I couldn't stop looking at this. Now, in the roof, should you be mad enough to need external radiator space, uh, you can pop these plastic grommets out, and it does come with, yes, as you can guess it, more grommets um, that you can just change, so you can pass water cleaning hoses outside. Now, like I said, should you be nuts enough with this case to need external water cooling, the option is there, although, to be perfectly honest with you, it's really nice that they've got full on blanked covers as well as, and I'll show you, rubber grommets as well. Because most places will just have those with the kind of things that you always want to stick your finger inside. It looks like something that you put a tea towel in and have it hanging up in your kitchen. With this, they've actually got the grommets that you can fit and full on blank panels. So they definitely, definitely require a thumbs up for that. Uh, something else is that the motherboard tray is actually removable from the back panel as well. In fact, I'm going to finish screwing these up now. Now, as I said, you can see all these screw holes right the way around the outside of the case. And this is because of all the modular options, like, for argument's sake, this panel that I told you about before that you could hang the, that 120mm bracket off of should you wish. Uh, technically you can put a, a radiator bracket in as well, this isn't one, but you can put a radiator bracket in this side as well, or that would affect you know, you've been able to fit stuff to your motherboards. Um, you can see the back side now of uh, where the clips and everything are that I was talking to you before. Obviously you've got this panel here. The, um, this is uh, where you can have your, your fans fitted uh, and obviously you don't even have to have these but something I will point out to you is that's where the uh, screw holes go through look. but they are, everything's got rubber grommets on as well so they don't rattle so if you've got fans on nothing rattles it's all immensely immensely well put together I mean even this uh, the um, the, like the rubber grommet, it is a U-channel grommet so you can see that there's a cut there so someone's you know sat there and made that but this is a really thick rubber it's actually really nice, got a real good quality feel to it this rubber grommet is proper proper thick I mean you can see how if I put my finger there you can see how thick this is like for pushing all your cables through um, I'm a bit, I'm not miffed but the fact that you can see these cables on the back of this uh, is a bit sad um, it probably it might not be so bad if like I said the braid come up a bit further uh, it's obviously they've got all real nice clips you can take off replace the switches should you want with your own colours which is probably the main point that you don't have to run the ones that come with it you can literally just unscrew and fit your own ones so having easily removable clips is cool but I do just think that the uh, braid could have come up a lot further even if it was 
you know what I mean, the heat shrinked up a bit tighter. I think that would be nice. Uh, you can get a blank panel, by the way, for the front. You don't actually have to have any of that there. You can just literally not have them there at all. Uh, so another crazy kind of, uh, another bit of customization that you can do. Uh, my ones come with all the screw, like these um, motherboard standoffs ready fitted. Uh, for most of us, we're going to be wanting to remove that one, that one, and that one. Probably that one as well, anyway. But at least they are all there should you uh, need them. Again, like I said, you've uh, you've got an extra PCI slot. This is uh, for like extended motherboards. Although really, this case only supports what would be deemed as like a normal ATX, something like the MSI Big Bang Marshall or the Gigabyte G1 Assassin won't fit in this case because it needs a lot more depth. But, should you need a case of a lot more depth, uh, Case Labs do sell cases that are, are you know, much deeper, like 10 PCI slots. Uh, they do um, ones that support the EVGA SR2. They, they literally do cases that would make an EVGA SR2 look small. Um, it's just bonkers. Uh, in the bottom, as you can see, when I was showing you the... the the fact that you can have a radiator in here, this is just where I've had my rad in here by the way. Um, the panels are all blanked off already. But you can, uh, you know, just remove those quick. And if you have a look on the underside, you can see the uh, fan cutouts for the, um, the radiators. Obviously normal 15mm fan spacings. Um, so... Uh, you can have your radiator on the other side. There's uh, while we're on the bottom, actually, there's actually a choice. And again, I've not fitted these because I didn't. I wanted to show you. There's a choice for uh, casters, which have got uh, block brakes on. Should you want to fit those, or you can just have some really solid rubber feet that you can fit to the bottom instead. I think they're for the bottom anyway. Uh, but yeah, you've got casters. The uh, the rubber feet might be for them, no, it looks like they're for that. Um, at least I hope they're for that. <laughs> like I said, there's so many things for this, it's just bonkers. Uh, obviously, if you were running a rad inside, you could quite easily fit your um, uh, your dust filters on the outside, should you want to, have the radiator and the fans on the inside, which will make it really easy for cleaning. Uh, but the fact that these are all still blanked off is brilliant. And obviously, where they are blanked off, where they are blanked off, it really doesn't uh, make any difference uh, to whether you use them or not. It's just completely insane. Um, something I'd, I'm going to put you back on the tripod quickly. Right, we'll zoom you back in again a little bit. Right, we'll move this over. Now, I've got these uh, other panels, and now this is where it all starts to get completely nuts because. Uh, I'll, Instantly, when I saw uh, mesh panels on the side, I was just thinking, me personally, I was thinking, dust, oh my god, it's going to be a complete nightmare. But, you can spec your case. Now, I've not taken the brown paper off, so before you start moaning, um, they do come. You can buy window panels as well. Now, what I want to say... I put the roof back on. Didn't the right way. Uh, that should be a, a clear window there. Now, window panels. You can have a window this size, or you can have a monstrous window, which they call the XL window, which is pretty much almost all of the door. And the window panel, this one underneath, is clear, but they also do red, yellow, green, smoked, uh, blue. And these are all things that you can just literally, uh, when you order your case, select all these options, tell them exactly what you want. Or, let's face it, we're all changing our rigs all the time. And how many times have you had a case and you've uh, decided you've wanted a different colour, or you've decided to change your rig? Well, you can just order a different window panel. You can just kind of like change the colour with it that way. Uh, or say, for um, say you've had your case for a bit, you want to expand the water cooling, you can just add the, uh, uh, the extra panel for the roof. It's all completely nuts. And just to show you how far Case Labs have gone with sending me kit for this, you've seen me take the other two door panels off. Well, I have got replacement door panels 
for both sides as well. So you could have a window, yeah okay your power supply is on this side but let's face it your power supply might not be there or you might want to show off your power supply sat there you may have a custom fan in it or you've custom braided all of your power supply and this normally when it's kind of hidden away you're not going to see it easily you can have it there and show that all off as well and still be able to show your radiator off in the bottom so you don't yes if you have a window on this side you need to make sure your rigs tidy on the other side but uh, that is all um, available for you now I'm just looking around now trying to make sure that as far as this is concerned I've done everything so far and as far as this is concerned at the moment I think I have it's now time to move on to the pedestal so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to uh, move this off the side now and we'll take a look at the pedestal right then guys and girlies uh, on to the pedestal now this is designed so that the uh, M8 can sit on top and then it obviously gives you uh, more room for even more water cooling radiators should you wish uh, now this is very much like the um, uh, the top of the case where you can remove the side panels you can just pop them off again it's got that exact same style mesh on and you can see here that I've fitted a 360mm rad already um, and this you can, you can move it up and down as uh, you can with it throughout the rest of the case um, now at the front there is the option, uh, this, uh, this is the right size for three optical bays. So for argument's sake, optical bays may seem a little bit weird in a separate part of the case, but you could put your optical bays down here should you want. Uh, but also what you've got to bear in mind is there are uh, increasing amounts of uh, reservoirs now with optical bay uh, and pump combinations. So you could uh, have uh, your, your pump res down the bottom or you could just fit um, one of the brackets with a 120mm frown in the front to pull air in or you could just have uh, the mesh panels in the front instead. Uh, talking about airflow, because obviously you could put a 120mm fan here, have it dust filtered and have it so that uh, the radiators themselves were exhausting. Um, around the back of the case there is um, a little bit of dust. There's uh, two mounts for 180mm fans. I'm pretty positive it's 180. Now I've said it out loud, I flipping hope so. 140mm fans, so I do apologise. <laughs> uh, so, yes, I will uh, change myself. I was wrong. These panels are saying fit 140mm fans uh, in the back, and there's two of those. So again, you could have uh, these bringing air in and the radiator is going out because you can dust filter these easy, or you can have it the opposite way around. It really doesn't matter. One thing I will say is if I turn this up this way so you can see, basically, if I put the ruler in to show, actually, no, I'll use this big reaction to show you. Uh, if you had your optical bays in, now obviously they wouldn't be this big, but that's how close they would be to the radiator. Now obviously they're only going to come to about here. There's room for fans on this side without a problem, but if you're using a 60mm thick rad, which is what I would call a full size thickness radiator, uh, you would have to have the, the fans on this side because you wouldn't be able to fit them this side. It also means that you wouldn't be able to fit push-pull. But, as I said, you don't have to have anything in the front. You could just have mesh panels there and, you know, and not really have to worry, and then you could run your push-pull. Um, like I said, this thing is so customizable, uh, you can just make it work around your rig. So you could just have me mesh in the front, um, your, with maybe a dust filter or something on it, or you, get, you could dust filter the sides. It's just, it's infinitely customizable. You could technically have uh, the back and the front completely enclosed, and just have the warm air, the cool air coming in one side and getting exhausted out the other side. So you had like a cross flow it really wouldn't matter. Um, now the bottom is removable. Now this is the bottom, it has to be the bottom because it's got a floor, so this has to be the bottom. But I'm unsure A why it's removable or B why it's got two holes in it. I've not been able to work that out. It doesn't work when you turn it round the other way. This is the bottom because it's got the threads in for the feet. 
uh, and everything. And then this top section hasn't got threads because you would screw uh, from this side up through so that you can um, you, you then bolt in the top to the case. So this is definitely the top bit. I don't understand why this panel is removable. It may just be a manufacturer thing. Uh, but again, you've got uh, the screws on the bottom of this so that you can fit your casters or your feet or whatever you should wish to the bottom again. Um, and it, uh, it's just absolutely nuts. I mean, look at the amount of room that you've got inside there. If you were to have two radiators in, you'd still have enough room to be able to fit um, your pumps down the middle, should you wish. It's just, there is so much room. Um, yeah, you could, have, you could even get away with having push-pull radiators and still be able to get uh, push-pull radiators on both sides and still comfortably be able to get um, your pumps uh, in the bottom, even if you're running multiple pumps. And obviously with all the uh, options for the uh, fans in the back, optical bays in the front, it's just unbelievably customizable. Now, something I want to talk about just quickly, and I'm going to stick that on there, and I'm going to get the case, and I'm not going to screw it on, I'm just going to sit it there, but I'm going to take the door off. Now, Say for argument's sake, I have the case uh, set up like this and it's all screwed together lovely. Um, and uh, one thing I would say, and this is something that I found a little bit uh, confusing, is uh, this panel in the bottom, uh, obviously you could cut uh, so you could fit grommets in. But I think it would be quite nice if it was an option uh, from Case Labs. Uh, to maybe have uh, some grommeted sections for the bottom or let's face it with the amount of things around here that you can customise it really wouldn't be that hard to have a couple of sections that you could put in that could just be unscrewed uh, just so that you can uh, pass cables down for the fans for the radiators and for the back maybe or the powers for the pump obviously we'd need this on both sides but also so you can pass the water cooling hose back up through. Now that is an immensely picky thing with the amount of options that this case has got. Um, it just seems to me that this might have been something that they've not necessarily thought of. Obviously you could cut your own and have them all in the perfect place for your rig but um, like I said with everything else on this case where they've looks like they've thought of everything this is just something very minor that I picked up that if I was going to you, you know, go to the expense of paying for the uh, the pedestal and having like my rig, you know, my water cooling down the bottom and keeping everything separate, that perhaps it might be nice to have some, you know, purpose-made um, grommets or sections here that you could pass your your hose up through. Maybe just something like this. Um, but yeah, I mean, but when you see the the case, let me zoom out again. Oh, it seemed out. Uh, okay, I'll move the camera back. Super Pro. There we go. Obviously, we've not. I'm going to put the uh, panel on so you can see. Well, right, the window panel. I mean, not being funny guys, that does look absolutely lush. And Alright, let's just go for the maximum effect. I'm going to whip the roof panel off quick. He says. This is where I'm trying to be nice with it when I'm on camera. Is it going the other way? Yes it is. Right, so. It's not quite lined up. I need to get it screwed in really to make it sit there better. But, let's face it guys. Look at that. I'm going to have to move my camera back even further. Just so that you can see it. 
I mean, yes, this is absolutely monstrous. It's enormous. Um, and you would need a massive rig, but I mean, look at it. It's gorgeous. I, I really, right, we're going to have to get to the conclusion. Um, and right, I'm just going to sit down and I'm going to rattle on a bit. Um, first of all, let's talk about an award. And actually, I'll tell you what I need to do. Let's stop the camera quickly. Right guys, what I wanted to do there was uh, double check the price of the M8 and uh, it starts from $359.95 US dollars and then uh, the more bits that you add uh, onto it, kind of like they add more uh, money, do you know what I mean? So for argument's sake, if you want, I'm just reading it off the screen, if you want, um, this is the standard ATX layout, if you want your board on the other side, it's all upside down, you can have it reversed that's 20 quid. Uh, if you want a window on it, uh, it's 15 pound. If you want an extra large window, it's another 20, sorry, dollars. Uh, you can choose clear, grey, amber, blue, green or red windows. You can have the top cover ventilated or solid. Um, it's just, it's infinite. It, there's so many things um, that you can add on and obviously the plinth would add a bit more money if you wanted that. Obviously, I've been lucky enough to be sent loads but, like I said, it's just unreal. Now, I'm going to start off uh, by talking about uh, an award straight away, and I'm going to plough straight in and say a gold award, and I'm going to explain why. Um, yeah, okay, it's uh, expensive. By the time you've kind of, you know, got everything that you want, you could end up spending kind of five, six hundred dollars. Um, but... Uh, I, I, I wanted to try and save this till the end, but it's the only way I can put this case. It's because it's so infinitely customisable and blatantly built for someone not necessarily looking to scrimp and save, but that's going to have a monstrously powerful system and they want something to look a bit different and be able to have their case that work perfectly for them. You can't get away from the fact that it's blatantly a full-on enthusiast case. I mean, this uh, pedestal, let's face it, I didn't mention it before, but you could get a phase system in the bottom of this if you wanted. So you can end up having a sub-zero CPU. It's a proper, proper enthusiast case. And by enthusiast, I mean someone that really wants the very best, really, you know, computing is their, like, main hobby. They want to be spending money on it. They go to work to spend money on their PCs. And to be perfectly honest with you, I don't see another case... That is this good. I would now say this is probably the best enthusiast case on the market at this present moment in time. Now I've purposely, purposely not mentioned another very, very well known uh, American case manufacturer um, that does make similar products to this. And I'll say it now, Mountain Mods. But the reason why I've avoided saying it is because the Case Labs rigs are in such a league above Mountain Mods, it's unbelievable. Mountain Mods are generally all kind of flat panels, you've just got a basic cage inside and then uh, the panels all bolt on, everything's kind of, all kind of flat sheets. Um, even with their tower cases, the side panels have to be screwed on. I mean, just the side panels alone make this case superior. The fact that you've got everything else as well that makes these... Uh, literally, if you were to put um, case labs and a mountain mod case side by side, we'd, I would have a field day picking out how much better the case labs rigs are. And just even just down to the fact that the, the side panels, and I know this isn't side panels, the roof, but just from an engineer's point of view, the fact that um, the, all the edges are all folded round, uh, you can't see any weld marks or anything where it's all been finished properly, the fact that you don't have to screw the roof on, it's actually got these pop sections. I mean, like I said, the mountain mods are just flat panels. It's the type of thing that you could uh, make at school, and all they've done is really made a really good business around it. 
but the uh, Case Labs cases are proper engineered, amazingly well designed cases and that's why they are like leagues above the, um, the Mountain Mods rigs. And I, I really don't want to go into it too much more than that to make it kind of like them sparring off against each other. But if, it was, if I had a choice and it was going to be my own personal rig and it was get a free Mountain Mods case or pay full price on these and I had to have one of the two, I would quite happily spend my own money over getting a free case just because of the equality difference. It just it, it is that stand, you know, stand apart. Now the only real problems that I found with it was the braiding on the uh, power and the reset. The USBs, they really need to be uh, all together so that they're like one bit and you push them in. Because it is very easy to get them around the wrong way and start killing parts. Now if you want to leave them that way, Case Labs, I would severely suggest that you are very, very clear. Make sure that you send out uh, diagrams so that people can't get them the wrong way around. Because I didn't get anything with mine. I got pretty much everything else that you can possibly think of, which I'm very, very, you know, very happy about the amount of stuff that I've got. But if I was a customer and I'd got all this and I still hadn't got that, just something that you could put on a piece of paper and just to make it very blatant and clear. And for argument's sake, I killed my best USB drive, which had all of my documents on it, all my schoolwork, or uh, just stuff that was really, really important, like photos or something, I wouldn't really be very happy. So that needs addressing without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, again, the, the braid on this was uh, a bit iffy. I think you could have done a much better job on that. Um, yeah, it just looks like someone that doesn't really know what they're doing has just been doing it day in and day out rather than making them all nice and tidy. And I do think the braid's a bit low quality as well. Uh, the only other real thing that I picked up was the fact that there's no real way to get stuff, if you're using the pedestal, up inside the case. I've looked about, I've not really seen any options for it either. Um, so it would be nice to uh, maybe have those panels available so that you can, uh, you know, like bolt them in and you've got the grommets there as well. I know that you can do it yourself, but once you've spent this amount of money for a panel that's going to cost you $20, it would just be nice to you know, have it there. Or maybe even, let's face it, if you buy the pedestal, you know you're going to need to get uh, hoses or cables up inside the case. I think that if you buy the pedestal, you should get the uh, plates that go in the bottom of the M8 with the pedestal. Even if it puts the pedestal price up a little bit, I think they should come with it, just so that they're there and you can swap them. I've definitely not got them and I've not been able to see any on the, uh, any of the pictures or on the website or anything. Um, now that's just, like I said, me being immensely, immensely picky. But, yeah, this rig is just unreal. And, like I said, I would have normally have built a rig in this. But I hope you can see now, with the panels coming off and radiators going in and out and all the rest of it, you can see uh, why, I've not, you know, why I haven't, but also when you think about it, with all the fans and stuff and stuff all over the place, it would have been an absolute mission of a job. But one thing I will say is this isn't going to be the last that you see of the M8. Uh, maybe the last you see of it for a little while. I am waiting for some certain components to be released uh, and it's not going to be uh, components from AMD, make make that's that. Um, but this will be coming back again because I am that impressed with this rig. I know I've said this before and stuff hasn't really happened, but I am that impressed with this rig, I am going to use it for my own system. Not sure if I'm going to use the pedestal yet or not, but I can promise you I am going to be using this case. And it's just literally going to be waiting for the right bits to get released and the right bits for me to be here but I am going to be sticking this case very lovingly back in its box uh, wrapping it all up again all lovely and I am 100% going to be using it again that's how much I like it so let, just, just go over it and I, I can pretty much say it with one basic sentence this as far as I'm concerned is the best enthusiast case available on the planet today because it's so infinitely customizable and the shocking thing is is this is the small case labs case everything up that else that they make gets bigger from this they get taller they get longer it's just absolutely unbelievable and 
a massive, massive thumbs up to them. And yeah, I'm just, it's unreal. Absolutely unreal. So guys, this is Tiny Tom Logan with the best um, enthusiast chassis on the planet, the um, Case Labs M8. Bear in mind, I've not even seen the bigger ones yet, but it's a Case Labs case, and as far as I'm concerned, they make amazing enthusiast case. Obviously, this is the one I've seen, so I think this one's the best one, but yeah, I'm rambling now. But gold award winning Case Labs M8. This is Tiny Tom Logan with another extremely long video for you. Out.